Let's start by graphing the line y equals 3x plus 4. So I've got the line over here on the right hand side. I can click these double arrows if I want to focus in more on that graph. Now over here in the upper right hand corner, I've got lots of tools so I can see this graph exactly how I want to. To change those settings, you can start with reversing the contrast to get it into dark mode. You can also darken everything by clicking on the A. This works great if you are projecting the image, say you're teaching a class or something. So back to the lowercase a. You also have some great grid options. You can click on and off for those grid lines and you can also uncheck the minor grid lines. I'm going to leave that unchecked. Now this next area here is to change your viewing window. Let's say that instead of having an x min and max of negative 10 and 10, I want to go from negative 5 to 5. And instead of tick marks at two, I'm gonna change my step to be one so it changes those tick marks and labels at one along my x-axis. I can also type a label on my x-axis if I want to. Now for the y-axis, let's do something similar. I wanna change this to go from, let's go from negative eight to eight, and I want that step also to be one instead of two. And you can label this one if you want. Now under more options, there's not a lot of things that are useful here depending on what you're graphing, but you can lock your viewpoint if you want. I am going to uncheck this, and I wanna show you a few more things. First of all, I want to show you how to get back to the default viewing screen and that's just by clicking on this home button here. Now from here you notice that I've labeled my axes. The x and the y are now showing up. I can also do some zooming in and zooming out by clicking on the plus button to zoom in and the minus button to zoom out. If you've got a touchpad you can use your two finger touch to drag that zoom. I can move our graph around by clicking and holding and then dragging this around. Another way to change the look of your graph is to go back to the equation that we typed in. Let's click on the double arrow in the upper left-hand corner. I've got my equation here. If I wanna hide my graph, I just need to click on the circle next to the graph. I'm gonna click it one more time for it to appear. And then to edit settings for our equation, I'm gonna click on my gear button. Clicking on that circle again gives you some additional options. You can change this to a dashed line. I'm gonna change it back. You can change the color and you can change the thickness. I'm gonna change the thickness here to a four. I'm also given the option to change this into a table. And as I create my table, you'll notice that it just gives me automatically five different points. And over here on my graph, I've got those points and I can click on the points to reference what I've got in the table. I can even change those points. Let's say I wanna change this to a negative 1.5 and it gives me that new corresponding point. Let me click off of this and I wanna change my graph so it's interactive. Instead of having the slope fixed at three, I'm going to put an M out in front to designate our slope. And it automatically doesn't recognize it, so it wants to know if you want to add a slider, and I definitely want to add a slider here. So it's giving me the option now to change the value of M from negative to positive, and it set up my values to be from negative 10 to 10. If I click on that m equals 1.2, I can also change what my bounds are. So say I just want to explore between negative 5 and 5 instead, and I want it to go with a step of 1. So back to my slider now, my slider now is going to just explore those different slopes. In addition to equations, you can also plot points. So let's say that I want the point 5 comma 6, and it plots the point there on my grid. We can also explore points on our line. If I click anywhere near one of my intercepts, Desmos really wants to label the intercepts for you. Notice how that gray point appears. If I click it a second time, it's going to go ahead and fix the coordinates for us. Notice how it's also put a gray point down there at the x-intercept. If I click on that one, it's going to fix the coordinates for me too. You'll learn more about all that Desmos can do here.